Hey everyone, so we've just had the Nia Hot Products catalog arrive on our benches this morning and I've gone through it and I've had a look and seen what's new and what I like in there and all that sort of stuff. So this one is running a little bit late. Usually they come out in April, uh, March. Um, so I'm not sure exactly why they're running a little bit late, but they were. So, but they're here. So we've got plenty of them. We can hand them out uh, to anyone who wants one. Um, so the feature product on the front of the hot product catalog is the new Savage Impulse, which is a straight pull rifle. And for good reason, I reckon that's gonna be a big product over the next year or so. The product on the back, which I'll talk about a bit more in a bit, is the new eye aiming thermal rifle scope. So it's an actual proper rifle scope, not a monocular. So you can actually fit this to your rifle uh, we have them on order already, but I'll talk about that a bit more later when I get the, to the product. But this is really interesting. So it's really interesting that Naya put both of those on the on the list. So new Naya, obviously ATK uh, or Vista Outdoors acquired Remington ammunition and the cleaning products and everything. And so ATK's importer is Naya, so they got all the ATK, ATK acquired all the Remington stuff. So you got Remington ammo, um, the which i'll talk about a bit when we get to the ammo section the cleaning gear and all that sort of stuff uh, but i do have some notes up the top here all right cool here we go this isn't going to be easy for me to thumb through if i had proper tags i'd put them on there so the first thing that i came across that i thought was really interesting was the um, the BX1 magazine clamp, so the duo mag, so it's actually a clamp to put the Ruger BX1 magazine stick two of them together. So because we're not allowed our big mags anymore, in, like they won't allow us to import them, um, this is an option for those people who wear 10 shots, this isn't enough. And they're only selling for 39 bucks, so that's a pretty good deal. The next thing I came across, which I thought was pretty cool, so Ruger still got all their, their standard goodies and whatnot that they do, the single sixes, Savage. So they've got their standard rifles. This is their impulse rifle, which is featured on the front. So straight pull. This is gonna be the big one, yeah? This, the Savage Impulse Predator, because it's a straight pull, but it's got that 10 shot AICS magazine. So the other ones you'll see only have a short mag and it's not an ACIS mag. So we may be able to do an aftermarket modification if you got say the Hog Hunter and you wanted to fit a 10 shot mag to it, we might be able to do aftermarket. But from the factory, this Impulse Predator, which is available in your standard 22 to 50, 243, 6.5, 308, that is gonna be the biggest seller. 25.95, pretty good for a straight pull rifle. Good technology and this sort of thing. It's a shame they're not doing one in 223 because I'd like to see a straight pull 223 um, where you can just charge through the rounds and you, if you're not picking the cases up. So that's the new impulse. If you need any more info, just sing out as we go through. Um, so nothing else in Savage is actually really any different. The 42 takedown is still available. Um, their target rifles, Savage Axis, Savage Rascal, A22R, well, they're still at a really good price, so if you do want an A22R, we can still do a good price on them. Um, Marksman, that's a good solid 22 bolt action rifle, or 22 mag. I mean, always sold a few of them, we try and keep them on the shelf. Kimber, now the real shame about Kimber is that uh, you just can't get any of their products, yeah? So Montana, Mountain Ascent, these are their really light ones. They have nothing in stock in Australia. The Hunter series, which are their sort of standard series, like synthetic blue, none in stock. The more expensive ones, the open range, which is like a semi-weight barrel, heavy barrel. Um, <gasps> they've got like a stainless ring between the cap and the barrel. I did that on my 6.5 just recently and it looks really cool. So I just ripped them off apparently. Um, select grade, none of it's in stock. You can't get any of these at the moment. They've got none coming into Australia. I don't even know why they put them in the book. This one here, the K6, this is really interesting. 
But again, no one's seen one. We've got none coming into Australia. But that's a real shame. Kimber 1911 is always popular. Add for Leupold. Anschutz. I'm pretty sure I marked... Yes, I did mark this page. Because some of the Anschutzes are available. In particular, this German model 1782, I believe, is available at the moment in Australia in, one in, uh, in 308. Yeah? That is a really, really nice rifle. You know, if you're looking for something that's going to compete in quality and whatnot with a like a Seiko or something like that, um, a little bit more, a bit rarer, you know, if you want something a bit different, that's certainly the way to go. They also make these in a um, GRS stock, the GRS laminated stock. Haven't seen any at the moment. So 1761, that's their new 22. Um, MPRs and MSRs, which are all right. I don't reckon they're as nice as the old ones, the 1700s, 1710s, which is what these are. And they've actually got some of them in stock in Australia still. So if you want to match 54, I would recommend going that way. Colt, never seen one. Like, just, you, you never get availability of these sorts of things, and they're hideously expensive. So there's some Colt fans out there that are like, like the, that Nye bring in Colt, but you just can't get product. Barrett. A few long range guys, those ones are Ben WA. Um, the MRADs are approved if you have a non folding stock model. So that's the ones on the left. Glock, so Glock, the new Glock model 44, is that one there? It's just over a grand. That's the Glock in 22 long rifle. So if you shoot a Glock now and you'd like a 22 long rifle training rifle, training handgun, sorry. That'll be the way to go, yeah? 10 round, 22 long rifle. But it feels the same in the hand as the other Glocks. Deanna, nothing new in Deanna. Just going to skip past that. Adlers. So the Adler B220s, which are the tube mag pistol grip, as well as the all-weather model. Uh, you can now get them with 28 inch drop in barrels because before we could only get 20 inch barrels and so you could only go for the seven shot. But if you go for a 28 inch barrel, means you can go for a nine shot mag. We make a nine shot aftermarket mag to suit the Adlers. That's available in 10, but you already knew that. Lever actions, which are the same as always. Losing popularity over the over the straight pulls. ATA, I don't know why, but ATA make their own straight pull rifle, but Nye's not bringing in. But these rifles are their bolt action rifles, which should come out really, really nice. I'm really looking forward to seeing these. They look similar to a, like a modern Vore or something like that. You know, they've got that fat bolt design with the three lugs and everything. So, but the Walnut one is only 995, as you can see there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, that tactical one is going to be, I reckon, the big seller. It comes with a one of the um, uh, the 10 round mags, and they're only 1625. But that looks really, really cool. But even the synthetic one at 9.45, I reckon all of these are going to sell pretty well. We'll see how they are when they get in here. Now the ALR, it's the sniper rifle. They sell it as a ALR sniper rifle. That's selling for 19.95. So that's in a chassis. That'll be that'll be pretty interesting. There's actually quite a few of them on back order already, so you should see a few of them around once they hit the country. They're only available in 6.5 Creedmoor and 308, but that's what most people who do that sort of shooting want. Um, and then everything else in ATA, like their shotguns, and the Akar shotguns are pretty much the same. The Churchill, that's always been the big seller. So, really popular. There was some really good uh, promotional material on these things in the early days. So, they got a really good name really quickly. And so, everyone wanted them. Come off the boil a little bit since straight pulls have been so available. But... This is the eye aiming. So this is the thermal rifle scope that Nye are doing. Don't know much about these. Only started hearing about them this morning. Haven't done much reading on them other than what's available here. Um, hopefully, like everything that Nye does, it's a really reliable product because a lot of the issues have been with this sort of product and new things in the market has been questions about reliability because once you're dealing with mechanics you know and electronics and that sort of stuff people tend to be a little bit more reserved um, so i'm hoping i've got quite a few of these on order already um, 
and I've got a couple for the shelf. So we'll see what they come through like. But I'm hoping that they are a really good product. Um, Naya tend to be quite good at testing their products before they put them on the market. And hopefully this is no exception. So that's the big daddy. He goes up to 19 power. So 19 times magnification. That's quite large for a thermal. Um, he's just over the five grand mark. He's the middle of the road one. So he goes up to, I think it's 12.8 times magnification. So down to 1.6, which is pretty cool. So if you're a pigger or something like that, but you do a bit of fox shooting, that would probably be one of the better ones to go for. I reckon that's probably going to be the biggest seller because he's a thousand bucks less than the other one, but he's only what 600 bucks more than the little one, which is that one there. It's a 2.7 to 10. So it actually doesn't go down as small and doesn't go up as much as that one there. That one's much more versatile than that one, but he is only 33.95 for a thermal for a thermal scope. Yeah, that's um that's pretty cheap. 1024 by 768 video resolution. What else are they saying in here? 384 by 288 uh, is the sensor resolution, which a lot of the monoculars and stuff that we've been using over the years are about that sort of resolution, which is plenty good enough for a monocular. Um, a cubus, plenty good for a monocular, you know, if you're looking for a game, but if you want to play, take a shot at something. That one, which has got a bigger sensor, 640 by 512 sensor, I reckon that will be a far better thing. I reckon it'll look a lot better. People will um, people will pick them up and notice the difference between them. So I reckon that one's going to be the big seller. Frame rate, 50 hertz, 40 mil front objective, 40 mil eye relief. Like I said, the the zoom, the zoom on that one's a wider zoom than this one, so it goes lower and higher. Um, Battery types, 18650 button top. That'll be a pain in the ass, I think. I'm not sure. We'll see when it gets here. But it might chew, these things have the tendency to chew through batteries. So, um, 1200 meter detection range. Now, they've given the same detection range on both these things, and I just don't think that's. You, you, yeah, well, you might detect something at that range, but how do you know it's not a just a rock or a tree or something like that? You, you, the resolution of that one is going to mean that you're going to look at something and know what it is. Whereas this, you're going to look at something and you're just going to know that there's something hot over there. Um, okay, so they're Wi-Fi to your iOS or Android, so Apple or Android phones. 32 gigabyte internal memory. What do they need to save? Maybe you could save on your your recording and stuff if it hooks up to your phone. Yeah, it goes on a weaver rail. They both weigh the same. So both these ones weigh 690 grams, which isn't very heavy. That one's a bit heavier at 750 grams. But, yeah, they look really, really cool. Really interesting. I um, I really think they're going to do well in the Australian market at the moment because that, that's the way a lot of people are going. Okay, loop old. Big 6 HD, there's not much new there. They're still doing the 1 to 6, 2 to 12, 3 to 18, 4 to 24. Um, non HD VX6 is still available in 7 to 42. So if you need a big high magnification, they still do a 7 to 42, but it's not in the HD range. TMOA CDS. Okay. The VX5, these are the ones that were doing really, really well. Um, they do, the 3 to 15 when it came out was really popular, it still is. Then, But there's a bit of a jump in price as well as like bigger main tube and everything if you go for the 4 to 24, uh, sorry, 4 to 20 or the 7 to 35. But having said that, that 7 to 35, the big one, does offer really good value for money for what it is. You just got to get big rings for it. So that's a really good product. I like that. VX3 is not much new there. They're still up to 6.5 to 20, but you'll notice that they have dropped the LRP model from the VX3, so they don't do a VX3 LRP anymore, which is a real shame. I've got one coming, so if you're interested in a VX3 LRP long-range model, there is really nothing else that competes with it on the market, which is why it's so sad that they pulled it in, you know, in 
and introduced the Mark III, which I'll show you in a sec. Um, hopefully they, they ramp up the Mark III options to sort of replace the LRP. So, because that was my biggest seller. The Freedom, they do a six and a half to 18 in the Freedom. Um, and I haven't yet, but I've been meaning to take the the 6 to 18 in the Freedom and the 6 to 18 in the AR series out and just compare them optics quality wise because I am sure based on my relatively limited knowledge of the mechanics of scopes that the Freedom 6 to 18 although it's got less adjustability will have a lot better light transmission for hunting but that's I'm, I'm not definite on that yet we'll see how we go Loophole Custom Shop. A lot of people don't know if you've got a Loophole Custom, there's a lot of custom options that you can do with it. Um, and they're actually really, really well priced. A lot of the options that you can go for. So definitely worthwhile. If you've got a Loophole, uh, if there's something you'd like to change on it, you probably can. So hit the guys at the Custom Shop up. FX, which is fixed. Mark Three. Okay, so this is the series. So that basically what they've done is they've moved the LRP series over to well not really but um they got rid of the lrp series and introduced the mark three series which is sort of that long range tactical sort of scope but now it's under the mark so the black ring rather than gold ring so it's still gold ring warranty just black ring because it's a tactical series um and they're doing it in what are the options there 1.5 to 4 3 to 9 4 to 12 6 to 18, 8 to 24. The 8 to 24 is probably going to be the most popular. The problem is they don't do any of them in front focal plane yet. They're only second focal plane. But it's only 12.95 for the 18 model or the 8 to 24 model, which is really good. So if you're looking for it, like, because these things have got mill turret, mill reticle, um, you know, like TMR or mill dot reticle with the 10th mill, uh, P5 turret on it, so it's got everything that you would possibly need, except it doesn't have it in front focal plane, so which is a pain in the ass. Hopefully they introduce that in front focal plane under the two grand mark, and that will fit really nicely into the long range shooting market. Moving on, Mark 5 series, the Mark 5 7 to 35 is like the top of the line for what these guys do at the moment um but if you've seen that 3.6 to 18 that little one there that is the cutest little skill like, it would be perfect on a 308 or something like that so that's pretty cool not much else new in loop old, like their observation gear and whatnot there's not much new sunglasses Trent was talking about that on last week. They really are good sunnies, but they are expensive. They're a bit too expensive, but if you like, in, if you like nice gear, then they're not too expensive. But um, I've got a set and I really like them. Bushnell, not a lot's changed with Bushnell, but they have introduced the Match Pro, this one here. So the Match Pro is, it's got all the features you need for long range shooting, yeah? So it's front focal plane, mill reticle, mill turret, um, and it's in a 6 to 24, so it's a good size, and it's front focal plane, and it's just a touch cheaper than the loophole. So if you're only shooting during the day, and you're shooting competition style stuff, you know, and you're looking for that, that product like a Vortex or something like that, then it's worth looking at these new Bushnell Match Pros because they've got all the features you could want mm -hmm. for that style of shooting. But the optics quality on these, as well as the Vortex and whatnot, just aren't up to scratch for nighttime shooting. So if you do a lot of nighttime shooting, like if you're in WA like me and you do a lot of Fox and Roo shooting, then for about the same coin, you could go for the loophole, which we saw just back there. The only thing the loophole doesn't have is, is front focal plane. So you've got those two options. Neither of them is perfect for to do everything, but if you want to do everything, then you just have to spend a bit more. But um, but definitely really good options between that one and the and the loophole. Engage, nothing new, nothing new, nothing new. This is all Bushnell, and then they also do Tasco and Simmons, and that's the the interesting one that I wanted to show you was Tasco, Tasco, that. 
Essentials Roof Prism Monocular. So it's a 10 power monocular for $22.50. It's so like if you're looking for something for something cheap for someone just for a, a stocking filler or, you know, just for a, if you're buying them, getting them a voucher or something for their birthday, but you want them to unwrap something, that is the perfect little thing. Like 20 bucks. You just stick it out the window. Like if you're out shooting with your mates, you just put keep it in your pocket and you just stick it out the window if you need a bit closer look. So you don't have to point your gun at something to look through the scope to, to zoom it in to see what it is. See if it's a fox or a sheep. That is something cool. And I was really surprised about the price as well. Um, like they'll have a mandatory 12 month warranty on them. So it's not like it's going to break next week and you don't get your money back. It's, um, but yeah, something pretty cool to look at. Spotting scopes, loophole be relentless. Probably not the slogan you'd want at the moment with the Me Too movement. Okay, new for 21, Remington Oils. So a lot of guys like Rem Oil, yeah? You get asked for it quite a bit, um, and the products are still getting done by these guys. Now, I don't know if they're doing the full range that they were doing before. They probably are. Um, but I don't know if Remington's still making what everything that they made before. But all these products are new to Naya, so they're in the catalogue. Of course, Hoppy's Black, which is a really good product line, still available as well as their traditional stuff. Um, the number nine, which is really, really popular. A lot of people still think it's a really good copper solvent. It's not. It's a really good powder solvent. Um, you can, if you want to clean your gun forever with trying to get copper out of it, then sure, I'll sell you that till the cows come home. But at the end of the day, you are better off with butchers or something like that. Um, but it's a really good powder solvent. Um, so if you're using 22s, shotguns, even centerfire rifles, and you need to get the powder out of it, it's a really good product. Um, Hoppy's bore foam. That, I use that a lot because I'm lazy, because it's really, really good. You just leave it in the bore and it'll just strip all the copper out. It's just a bit messy to use. You just gotta know how to use it. Um, the Hoppy's Elite stuff, clean kits, this is all state, same as usual, yeah, same as usual, all the same stuff, slings, sling, Allen, dude, oh, this is Butler Creek, um, Primos Predator Calls, so, like, they do a lot of stuff for the American market, but I did see that Cottontail is probably a pretty good call for the Australian foxes and that sort of stuff, and the double cotton tail. Um, but there's dog calls and stuff as well. So if you are getting onto your dogs, definitely worthwhile getting a call because I know dogs that will come in really good if you've got a good call, they will come right up. Deer calls. So definitely come in and grab one of these in store if you want to have a flick through at your own rate. Um, Primos trigger sticks are really good. You just pull the trigger on it, drops them down and drops the legs out. Um, but we're hopefully also going to see soon some better tripod systems for you guys that shoot off ARCA rails in that three gun style event. Um, PRS style events, we're going to see some bike tripods come in for that. Um, Uncle Mike, so all the swivel kits and stuff, so if you've got a lever action and you need a front swivel band for it, these guys do it. RCBS, okay, so RCBS are uh, doing specifically for the Aussie market, are doing the Rock Chucker. So the rock, the their single-stage press system, they changed the name of it to the Rebel, which is really stupid because the Rock Chucker's been around forever. Everyone knows RCBS by their Rock Chucker press, but they decided to change the name, which is really dumb. Anyway, for the Aussie market, Nye has managed to get hold of some Rock Chucker reloading kits. So it comes with the Rock Chucker press, and all the goodies that you see there, and it's only 770 bucks. It's a really good option because factory ammunition is not getting any easier to get hold of. So that's the master reloading kit if you want the master. It's got a bit flash of shit in it. Uh, that's their powder dispenser. It's actually got a dual throw system, and you can see there it's throwing out um, out of two different nozzles, so it's get a lot higher speed. Um, they can throw up to 38 grains of 43.50 in seven seconds or something like that. So it's a really quick version of the electronic powder thrower. More, all their reloading equipment, pretty good. If you haven't got one of them, get one of them. Make it much easier to reload ammunition. And the other one is in Lyman, if you haven't already seen this. The 
Brass Smith's Case Trim Express. I'm getting one for myself. Really, really good idea. Um, they use the bushes to set your lengths and everything. Um, so it really makes it much easier to trim your brass. So I really like that. Um, everything else from these guys is pretty standard. GRS hasn't really changed at all. Alan might have bought out a new bag with a, you know, with a stripe on it or something. So I'm not going to go through that. You guys can go through that in your own time. I don't really think there's a lot else new, new, new in the catalogue. If you guys have seen anything that you want to know more about, just hit me up. Um, Coldwell. Lead sleds. Mate of mine was shooting off one of them on the weekend. They're really cool. They work really well. They also do an inline press, which is that one there. Coaxial reloading press. So if you're inline dies and whatnot, if you're into that sort of stuff. I know the bench rest guys like them. You can take them with you and bolt them onto the bench. Sports match. Lansky, if you haven't got a, if you haven't, you need to get something like this. If you've got knives, these deluxe reloading kits from Lansky's are really good. Seems now that Lansky have come out with it, they've been out for like 15 years or something now, at least 10. Um, everyone else is doing them as well. So, but the Lansky's the original. I've got one myself, works really well. Like, you, you still need a steel when you're out in the field to straighten the edge up. But to bring the edge back in after you've been using the steel for a while, these are one of the best systems. I think um, steel, I was talking about them last Thursday. Something similar anyway. Different knives. Now there is a, yes, this. I've just seen this. I don't know, it's, well, it says it's new, so maybe it is new. Because I was going to say, I've never seen this before in, in the catalogue. That is cool. I really like the idea of that. And the, where you can put your fingers in here to get them up close to the blade. So for a bit finer work. So if you're chopping like salami or um, chorizo or something like that or veggies, it would do that. But you could just use it as a proper axe and actually chop fuck out of stuff. So I reckon 125 bucks. I might actually get one for myself because I reckon that's really, really cool. But I also reckon it'll be, it's not just something that'll just sit there because it's impractical. I think that's actually a really practical idea as well. I don't know how much I'd use the gut hook, but, but that is cool. I really like that. Knives. What the hell? Okay. Yeah, no worries, mate. Triggers. Um, the new Calvin Elite for Remington 700s, which will go on to all your aftermarket Remington 700 stuff as well. It's actually a really handy thing being able to position the trigger like that. So you can slide the trigger forward and back and pivot it and move it up and down and everything. So being able to position the trigger will actually do a lot for your um, performance, like your trigger release. So that's a good idea. But they're doing triggers for tickers and rugers and all sorts of stuff as well. So if you've got a uh, CZ555 and don't like the trigger, then you're a normal person because no one likes the triggers on a CZ515. Timmy do make an aftermarket trigger for it. ZP1, I've sold a couple of these. They're a monopod that like, replaces your butt pad and the monopod is inside the pad. So it drops down at the back. Um, that is brilliant because it's really compact and everything. So it's a good idea. Uh, for the guys that are doing, okay, so I've priced all this stuff up and Remington Core Lock, 223 ammo and Federal um, Power Shock is pretty much exactly the same price. So I'm unlikely to swap up what I've got on the shelf. Like as I normally try and stock Federal, I'm unlikely to change that up because I really like Federal as a product line. Um, but we can get hold of this stuff and it'll be pretty much par you know, pretty much the same price as Federal for most of it. Um, but Naira are bringing all their stuff in. So the UMC, which is their cheap shit full metal jacket stuff, um, the Corlock uh, Premier, which has got the Accu tip, which is like a VMAX projectile. High performance rifle, that's just their standard bog stog ammo, just pointed soft point ammo, and that's the stuff that that and uh, Power Shock in Federal is pretty much the same price. Um, you got your rim fires, your bucket of shit. That never go off. You've got all their standard sort of stuff that all the oldies have been using since Christ played fullback in packets that look like they were designed in the 60s. Um, so there's all that. Shot shell ammo. Some of the guys that have been shooting their shotgun shell ammo for a while is probably going to like it. We can get it in for you. 
it's not a problem. Now the federal stuff, hammer down, which is their lever action line, it's made specifically to feed through lever actions, do really well. The burger line, so the gold metal burger and the burger hybrid, so if you need a really high BC factory round, that's definitely worth looking at because burger projectiles are exceptionally high BC and very consistent. Gold metal match, which we sell a bit of. Um, Vital Shock, so Vital Shock's usually got a premium proji in it for shooting usually bigger game, yeah? Like medium size to big game. Vital Shock, uh, V-Shock, sorry, because that's got the Varmint projectiles in it and Power Shock, which is their like bog stock, box, bog stock standard sort of pointed soft point round. Terminal Ascent, that's their projectile. Um, we say load in their factory ammo. Syntec for your handguns, you've got that synthetic coated round, which go pretty good. All the rimfire stuff, their bucketed bullet rounds actually go really well, you don't have misfires with them. Um, and they do them in 22 mag as well, ton of match. What I'm actually trying to get to though is SK, because SK have released a couple of things which might interest people. Most of this stuff's just the stand, same sort of stuff that you've always seen. CCI, haven't had anything new since the 1960s, so... SK, high velocity match and long range match, which are $14 and $16.80 a packet each. But these are both high velocity. So the high velocity match is 12, what's that say? 12.63 and 11.06 feet per second. So 22 long range shooting is getting more and more popular, like the competition and everything. And this is the sort of thing that these guys are going to want. They're specifically made for shooting past 100 yards. Um, and to maintain their energy and that sort of stuff so you don't have as much wind drift. So really good products. And then they're still doing all their, their flat nose, flat nose match, rifle match, all the stuff that people know and love. Ely, Ely, which I don't know as much about, but they do the same products. Ely shotgun, which is really good. And sometimes it's cheaper than some of the other options on the market, sometimes it's not. So it depends on what's the cheapest on the market at the time, um, is generally what we stock to provide the best value for our clients. Ely Amber, which is the low recoil stuff. Predator pellets, so the poly mags, and the metal mags, so if you need more penetration, more damage and that sort of stuff, the Predator pellets are really the way to go. Swift, which I've spoken about on Friday Night Live a few times. Um, Nosla, nothing new in Nosla that I've been able to see. So we're still selling plenty of their RDF projectiles because they're a really well priced proji for the BC on them. Um, spear, alien powder, which is a little bit easier to get now that guys at Downrange have brought a bit of it in, but it's still not in high demand because you can still get ADI if you need it. Um, Reloading Starline, and that's the end of it. You make a shopping list. So yeah, so the big items that I've spoken about, um, that's probably the best, the biggest one at the moment, is the eye aiming thermal. I'm really looking forward to seeing one of them. Um, and hopefully I'll see something like it later this week, but I'll let you guys know. Anyway, thanks for tuning in, and I'll uh, catch up with you guys. If there's anything you want to price on, just hit us up and we'll get you some pricing. Thanks.